how do we create something that's incredibly unique, ultra sustainable, and better to live in than your typical urban multifamily building? The built environment, um, so existing stock and obviously everything that's going on with, with construction, etc., itself is responsible for approximately 40% of all global carbon emissions. So on the path to net zero, the sector's obviously got a really clear role to play in, in mitigating for climate change. We are not just talking about the environment, we are talking about human health and we're talking about social impact as well. To be a regenerative building, it means that you're making a commitment to having a positive impact in the world. When we use the term sustainable, what we're generally referring to is the idea that something is giving back as much as it's taking from the universe. And generally speaking, when we use that term, we're thinking about the environment. And when we talk about regenerative, we are talking about positive impacts. So it means you're really trying to figure out how is this building going to give back to all of the planetary natural systems? How is it going to literally make people healthier by, be, by interacting with it, by being in it, by working in it? And then how is it going to have a positive social impact on the community? How is it going to bring people in to create a sense of belonging, to provide jobs that are good jobs? Those are all the ways that we define regenerative design and architecture. Regenerative design has got a lot of key benefits. Um, it can improve air quality in the immediate area um, through the use of things like green roofs and skins. If we look at the design of energy systems, we'll generate more energy than it actually needs. Um, there's the options there for storage and removing the reliance on, on grid supply, um, which then has the same knock-on effect of removing the need for the infrastructure that's associated with standard energy delivery methods. Um, and of course, all of that has an impact on, on the local ecosystems. Um, through using rainwater storage it can actually reduce that surface runoff and, and improve not only the quality of the soil but um, provides a reduction in the amount of um, potable water that's required uh, from things like um, water supply and, and sewage etc as well. So Solus is a mid-rise building that is basically built lot line to lot line so it's edge to edge ultra urban right it's on Pike Street in Capitol Hill, the most famous kind of street in Seattle. We built it using traditional techniques, right? So we focused on the areas that have the biggest impact for the least cost. And so what we ended up doing was coming up with ways to do thicker walls with more insulation where needed, triple pane windows that have an amazing seal from an energy perspective. So they're very uh, insulating. And so we you land with this, this luxury building that's using 60, 70 plus percent less energy than any brand new other building that's going up. And for just a tiny, tiny premium on the cost. On the north side of the building, we have a 70 foot mural hand painted by an artist and it's really beautiful and it's got integrated lighting that changes as you walk by it. And then, you know, I, I think that we're very smart about how we pick our finishes and how we do say our cabinets, casework, et cetera, and our appliances, we always spend more money on that stuff because it's the thing that people want. So this building, a building like Solus, while it's ultra sustainable, there is zero compromise from any perspective for anyone that lives there, right? It's beautiful from the outside, it's beautiful from the inside, but we're not asking higher rent than you know any new building around us really. MBS conducts a number of industry reports and we've recently launched the sustainability report for this year. Um, what we found from that was only 14% of the respondents, which were all construction professionals from, from around different areas of the sector, were working on green projects all the time. So it didn't paint a very clear picture that people were doing this continuously. The report asked respondents to explain how important sustainability was to them. Eight out of ten that replied um, said that sustainability was a was very important topic to them as a person, which I think links into the, the human morals of, of people typically just wanting to do good. However, only four out of ten said that um, it was important to their business. Now, this is going to have impacts of 
wide and, and varied different options, but I think it's going to be um, topics around the priority compared to other industry drivers, such as profit margins, delivery times, etc. Um, it's going to sit, and maybe compliance as well, it's going to sit maybe lower on the business agenda than it would be to the individual um, that, that's not responsible for keeping the business running. The unfortunate reality is that just because maybe a, a green building is worth more over time and that it can command higher rents and that it's healthier for us, that doesn't actually create as much market movement as we hoped it would because so many people just don't have the capital to invest in these things up front. We need to change policy and regulation to make that start to be more accessible and more required for the rest of the world. Property taxes are the number one thing that can dramatically move the needle with regard to how does a building pencil financially, right? So if you know you can get a 10%, 20% tax savings for an ultra sustainable building, that would be enough to make almost everybody do it. At the moment, we are still trying to get construction to be sustainable. Um, obviously sustainability is effectively the halfway point to regenerative design, however, if projects allow it, um, there's no reason why they can't be hitting the regenerative design requirements now. We don't feel there has to be any sort of compromise. You can have ultra luxury and ultra sustainable. So just you can have high end buildings that are ultra sustainable and they don't have to cost a huge premium. The amount of energy that you save with smart design, better insulation, better windows, heat pump technology, etc. Some of the really kind of blocking and tackling things is significantly more than you save by simply adding solar panels or something like that. But just incentivize it. Incentivize it through tax savings, incentivize it through less requirement for electrical build out, things like this, and people will do it. We as designers and constructors of buildings have a lot of control uh, over the amount of carbon that we are responsible for when we build a building because we can make very simple, oftentimes zero cost decisions to lower our carbon footprint just by making a slightly more thoughtful decision about what we put into the building in the first place.